What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with more content. And today we're going to be covering more of the MetaQuest 3 and covering hand tracking as well as switch view for improved accessibility. So if you're watching the content, you'll see that I'm actually wearing the Quest 3. And that's because I wanted to mention two important things. So first we're going to have pass through. Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's perfect because it's not. We could still have some improvements made in future generations. But pass through is going to be clear enough that I can interact with items, I can pick them up, and I could see things clearly. So as I'm looking at the actual Meta Quest 3 controllers, I could see the letters on the buttons, A, B, and X, Y. I have this mouse pad here. I can actually see the logo clearly and the speed M writing. I can see the hyper X writing on my mic very clear. And I can even see text clearly on my Chromebook, which I like to refer to as I'm making these videos. The second thing I want to mention is hand tracking. So here I have my hands. You can see that they're kind of highlighted with blue. And as I wave them, we kind of get the animations here which is really cool, it's very futuristic. It's very Iron Man-like. Now, just like the pass-through, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that hand tracking is perfect as well, but again, it's improved over previous generations. So you can see that I have this navigation bar. I can tap on it or make a pinch and gesture with my hand, and I can drag this bar around. Now, I got this right on the first try, but sometimes it's picky depending on the lighting and how well you do the gesture. This might take a little bit of practice, but it works really well when you have really good lighting and you have things down. In fact, hand tracking is good enough on the Quest 3 that I felt confident wearing the headset while completing this tutorial because I didn't think I would fail so many times that I would get frustrated making this content. But again, these features aren't perfect. We are going to be looking for improvements in future generations, definitely. So those things said, let's talk about how to enable hand tracking. So you can see that I have this navigation bar here and I'm going to look for the settings. It's going to be this gear icon with this green background and we're going to click on it. Now, again, with hand tracking, you do have to be precise here. And then we are going to look for movement tracking. And then we are going to look for hand and body tracking. And we're going to make sure that that pill slider is blue. That means that the feature is enabled. Now, as you can see, moving through these menus, hand tracking is pretty reliable. We've got a ways to go. So if I had to give this a score, I would say it's a seven out of 10. We definitely have room for improvement but it's good enough that you feel confident doing these things. And hand tracking is good for selecting things with your hands and moving things around. You can see that we can take this floating window and place it where we would want it. I could just let go and the item will remain where I want it. Again, this feels pretty much Iron Man-like. So let's talk switch view. So we're going to go to what I would call this widget here, or it's called the quick settings. It has the clock, the Wi-Fi logo, and our battery meter. And we're going to click on that. And then we're going to look for switch view and click on that as well. And you can see that the view of this window will switch to be larger. This is nice for accessibility. You can see that everything is larger. It's easier to read. And depending on the content that you're viewing, for example, if we pull up the browser here, we can have things really large. We can also resize here. Let's see if I can get this right. And this is perfect to demonstrate in this video because it doesn't always work as planned. But you can see that I can make this news article very large or this news website, I should say. We can also drag this window around place it in different areas, and we can open an additional window. So say I want that open with my settings. We can have that open with the settings. We can also move the window. So I'm gonna to try to move this one. We'll move it over there, and I could open a third window to the far left if I wanted to. 
And then we can return to our previous view by clicking switch view once again. And you'll see that we'll have everything here still, but it's on a smaller scale. In fact, it's kind of on a plaque and we can take the whole thing. We can move it further away from us or drag closer. We can put high up or to the left and I could drop it to the left there. And this would be ideal for if you're on the computer, you're doing a project here, but you also wanna to refer to things. Say I wanna check the news, I can scroll the news. It's just a very futuristic way of doing things. So I'm gonna take this, and just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna move it back to the right, but further away from us and drop it. So you can see the hand tracking again, it's very good and the pass through is very good. Again, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's perfect because it's not. We need to be clear about that so that people know what to expect and are not disappointed. But it is an upgrade enough to the point that you can actually do things with the physical world while interacting with the virtual. So that is it for today's content. As always, thanks for watching and may the universe flow in your favor. And until next time, Leon checking out.